In this chapter, we're going to take a look at more creative effects and effects that are perhaps a bit more decorative in nature. So reverbs, delays, modulation effects and distortions and even transient designers. The first effect I want to look at is probably the most necessary and most essential of all spatial effects and that's reverb. Now, there is duplicate effects for some of the things in Bitwig, like we've got two compressors and we've got three EQs, but there's actually only one reverb plugin. So what you have to do is use a single reverb plugin to create any reverb texture or length or space that you want, which is fine. So we need to get all of our reverb flavors out of this one effects unit. So you need to know it pretty well, but it's okay because it's quite simple. I've got a four track pattern going on here and I want to affect the synth line or synth bass that we've got going on. It's actually coming out of a third party plugin, but don't worry too much about that. At the moment, I've only got a delay on it and I've got the reverb, but I'm gonna bypass the reverb I'm working with. And I'll actually shut this area down as well to keep it nice and simple. And we'll play it in the mix and then I'll play you in isolation so you can get an idea of what we're gonna be working with. So there's just some drums, some percussion, this synth line and sort of a distant pad. Okay, so this synth line is working pretty well for me, but I want to be able to make it a bit more spacious and a bit more epic, maybe even just in sections of the project once I start sequencing it. But I'm gonna need to use reverb. Now I've programmed a reverb here, and what I'm gonna do is show you how I got to it, and then I'm gonna show you how we can change to something a little shorter and what we have to do to make those changes. So let's engage the reverb. And you can hear this adds sort of a high sheen, a stereo width, and a more epic effect to the whole, the whole line. And that's after the delay, so it's affecting our delay as well. Of course, we could shift it around, and then the delay would affect the reverb. But I think it works better the other way around. Okay, so let's take a look at the effect itself. There's actually two main sections to the reverb in Bitwig. We've got our early reflections section, and early reflections are essential for making realistic spaces. So when you're in a space and you hear the sound come back to you after you've made an initial sound, you get this early reflection, this delay, and also the reflection of items that are closer to you or objects and surfaces that are closer to you. So you hear the sound bouncing off those first, and then you get the sound of the main room, okay? So these initial sounds are generated in this first part, and then the main sounds of the main room are generated here. So you can sort of decide uh, how they're mixed using this mix control of early and late reflections, and what size the early reflections are, room or hall. We've actually got a room size early reflection, and then quite a large reverb time to make sort of a hall sound. Now the diffusion is gonna decide what sort of materials are in the room, so more diffusion, harder materials, less diffusion, softer materials, and then we've got like an EQ, so we can take all the bottom end out and we can add high end or remove high end. And we've got a crossover point. And so we can decide where those frequencies are at. And then we've got a master reverb time. Uh, and we've also got a mix control and a width control here. So I've got quite a lot of stereo width and I'm at about 25%. Let's try upping the reverb time. And let's try changing the early reflections. You can mix these two so you can have a short reverb time. And then you can hear the early reflections in isolation. And as you mix the main room in with the early reflections, you get a more realistic sound. Now, this reverb unit is capable of almost endless reverbs, as I'll now demonstrate. So you really can create everything from tiny ambiences. Let's demonstrate that now. So I've taken it down to room, the size is down, take the pre-delay down, reverb time down, mix early and late, half and half. Let's get rid of some of this EQ a little and then mix this in.
So that's almost like a space ambience, just like a small space. And in two or three moves, you can go from that to... Huge, endless spaces. So this is what I mean about reverb flavors. That's why I've titled this reverb flavors. This reverb unit is capable of everything from tiny ambiences to massive, endless creative sound design, soundscape effects. So you can really get everything out of this reverb. And this is really the trend these days that algorithmic reverbs are now becoming all in one tools. And you don't need four different reverbs for, you know, some for rooms, some for spring, some for this, some for the other. This will do everything you want it to do. And hopefully um, this will give you an example of how we can use it in the mix. So I'll leave it there. And next we're going to have a look at delays and how to make some spaced out delays. And I'm actually going to show you how to use effects units within effects units, which is going to be pretty interesting.